foil sagas, no. All right, so this is um, Bant Hero. Um, the, this was specifically a build around request for Amara, Soul of the Accord, alongside Huatli here. And then uh, they wanted it in the Bant color. So obviously Deputy of Detention is very good. And I think once you get Deputy into your deck, playing some copies of Shalai, even though this isn't a multicolored card to trigger Hero, is very good because this gives our other creatures Hexproof, which is very good with Deputy. A couple of people mentioned on... Um, Hydrate Crisis being a little bit awkward as a three of. I've got the fourth one in the sideboard for the mid-range and control matchups where it really shines, but I've got a lot of other like grindy mid-range top end type stuff. So I think three is where I want to start. Obviously, we're going to be playing on the ladder, so we have some flexibility to uh we have some flexibility to make changes in between as we go. Yeah, Amara is kind of a removal magnet. I don't know. I've had I've had mixed feelings with her. They're just one of the biggest issues. There really just aren't other good two drops, especially multicolored ones. So she kind of just defaults in. So if you're one of my newer viewers, one of the things I really try to sh shy away from doing is doing updates to deck lists every single time they spoil a new card. So there's going to be a ton of great cards spoiled with this new set coming. So rather than scramble to like draft an updated deck list every time a new card gets spoiled, I like to wait usually till we have the full thing going. Yeah, we switched her out for Tithe Taker in the Abzan build. However, in Bant colors, I think without Amara, this deck kind of struggles to have enough multicolored cards to trigger Hero consistently. Whereas, like, the Abzan build has a, a plethora of more expensive multicolored spells it can play at the top end, where this one really doesn't. All right, Esper Control. Let's, let's settle in, Chad. It's going to be a long one. Enjoy. Enjoy the ride down. What about that one card that does the thing? It'll definitely be good. I don't know. My big, my big, ooh, that's interesting. Campaign. Discovery is a little bit weird. Like, Stock Esper doesn't tend to play Discovery either. I wonder if they're more of a mid-range deck with this information campaign going on. Very possible. Spec. Thanks for the biddies. Hope you're having a good Monday. Welcome. What you're currently witnessing is one of the toughest things about Bant in this format, which is that your removal just kind of sucks. You have Conclave Tribunal to exile this, and I do, my deck does have two copies of Tristani in it. So if we can, if we can find our way into a Tristani, we could potentially grab our hero back that way, which would be nice. Come on, Conclave Tribunal. Conclave Tribunal, punish the greed. That's so unfortunate. If we'd have hit Tribunal there, we'd have exiled this, gotten our thing back, killed their Tefri, and they'd just be so far behind they could never catch up. Yeah, look, it looks like our opponent's likely playing a hero deck as well. I'm going to go ahead and play a Krasis for two here, trying to find a Tristani while also putting some pressure into play to pressure this, uh, this Tefri. Hitting the six lands not terrible here as well, because it means this crisis will draw two cards, which is decent.
kind of interesting that they didn't play the hero out before there. Man, that's brutal. So I could history plus Dovin here. The issue with that is I then don't have a way to pressure Tefri next turn still. So I think I think I need to play this so I have a way to pressure this so they don't have a removal spell. CSS Ninja, thank you for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate you shipping your Bezo Bucks this way this month. Uh, all right, I guess. Oh, all righty then. This thing's at three. So I think because that's at three, I actually want to play Amara this turn. Because this puts four power into play. So like, assuming no blockers, I do get to pressure this. But pretty good chance they have removal or blocker here. Rabner, thanks for the 22 months. Let's get to the good Hope you're having a fantastic Monday. Welcome. Vomit. You're just never... This game's probably into garbage time at this point. Yeah, I just don't think we're coming back from here. We had a window where we could have hit Conclave Tribunal and killed the Tefri, but once once that failed to happen, I think, I think things were just too far gone for us. So it'll definitely be a matchup where we bring in our fourth Krasis and like our Tefri out of the sideboard. I don't think this is a Frilled Mystic matchup. Trim my bottom end. Amara seems like poop. Probably don't mind Disdainful Stroke here. Counters Tefri, counters Bellhaunt, counters Kaya's Wrath. I think I want to leave these in. July is probably not great. Is negate better than stroke? Like stroke, stroke countering hostage taker as well seems appealing. As much as, as, much as I'd like to use my, my beautiful negate, I think stroke's just better. Yeah, I think I think I'd rather just have stroke. My my children came into my office over the weekend and like set up camp here behind me on my on this blanket and like took my took my snacks and like threw them all out of sorts. I'm like looking for like my snacks and my bars. I'm like where where did they go? There's there's some to my left. There's some to my right. Mm, seal away is almost never going to take hostage taker. Because that card's rarely going to be attacking, especially before before it, they cast their spell out from under it. I think this is fine. Children Entropy, name a more iconic duo, right? Oh, 
Oh, it's like the I have these I have these Nature Valley bars next to my desk, and like Jake like pulled one out of the box, looked at it, set it down, and then proceeded to like dump the rest of the box out just to confirm that like everything everything in the box was the same. I did not see your message, Geo. Huh? Hey, Vernash, thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. I think I'm going to do this so I get less blown out by a... So I get less blown out by a, uh, a Kaya's Wrath. Oh, I guess they don't have mana for Kaya's Wrath, huh? I, I I want this to be difficult for them to get back, though. Well, I guess Mortify kills both of these, so it's kind of a wash. Uh, Memekin went fine. You'll be able to catch it on replay later, as always. It's possible I was supposed to hold this land to play around this. Not just a gadget, but My strength is our strength. Quatly pushing towards ultimate here too. Dovin, Dovin's going to seven and she'll be at she'll be at nine next turn. I neglected to play a land there because of disinformation campaign. So the thing you need to understand about the tournament this past weekend, Smiley, is that one of the things that adds a lot of depth to the deck building and variety of power in Magic is this concept of sideboarding that we're playing here. So... Formats that lack sideboards tend to narrow the amount of playable decks to decks that are only on extreme ends of the spectrum. So decks that are either hyper fast linear aggro or decks that or decks that are like Gasper yeah, control deck that are super controlling to try and combat those linear aggro decks. Spherical Man trading in for some boots. Thank you for the three months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. There's going to be a lot of voice lines with this next set, for sure. I think I'm happy with how I sideboarded. Maybe, maybe I want some of these baffling ends on the draw. I could see that being reasonable. Uh, 
Oh, well, welcome, Smiley. Sorry it didn't pop up. Try refreshing your browser page, perhaps? Sunko, thanks for the 11 months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I'm actually going to trim a couple of these histories and bring in the baffling ends. Really don't want to lose to a fast thief. Well, thanks for the support, Smiley. Tan looks like a good balance here. So this is a fourth land for us, which is nice. Early removal, some counter spells. Sign me up. Huh. Do I... I think I do still flower here. I want to get to six lands guaranteed. I have plenty of white, so we'll grab the second forest. Ah, uh, yeah, this is this is the Rakdos avatar. It is one of the one of the new ones with the update. Take your favorite card away. That's fine. I didn't like my spells, anyways. Could you argue that the main deck of something like Mana Red and White Weenie are the best, even in best of three? I don't. I don't know. From the event. One of, the, one of the things about magic data that you have to understand is that objective magic data doesn't really exist. Most most magic data has some really extreme biases in one in, in one way or another. So I'm not I'm not a big fan of making like strong statements on the back of on the back of things that not having meaningful things to back it up. Can you explain the choice of Disdainful Stroke versus Negate in general, not just in this deck? Well, if you look in this deck, I'm actually playing both in the sideboard because the answer is these cards are better in different situations. So um, which counterspells you're playing and what they cover tends to be contextual to the format that you're playing. So if we look at this specific format that we're playing, one of the, one of the things that Disdainful Stroke grabs that negate doesn't that's a big one in this matchup especially is the card hostage taker so hostage taker is a card that you really want to take off the table that you can disdainful stroke that you however cannot um cannot negate Ooh. i'll show you the sponsors for 30 seconds while i restart the client the audio is wigging out these people are great by their stuff these people all so great by their stuff. They actually regularly scheduled Magic Arena. Oh, right. Since the cosmetics updates, when we restart mid-game, there's a white glare or like deer in the headlights. And the, and the sleeves go away. So the sleeves go away and there's a white glare. Oh, that's a that's a good that's a good line of thinking, Snap Bolt Snap. I agree with you. They they said it would probably be better to conclave first, so that way we can deputy the Dovin, because when the thing comes back out from under the deputy, and deputy's often likely to die, we would get the Dovin back under our control. Yeah, that's a that's a good suggestion. I was thinking I wanted to bait a Mortify with the deputies, so that way the Conclave Tribunal is more likely to live. But I like your line of thinking that deputies almost guaranteed to die, so like getting our Dovin back when that happens would be perfect. So would you say Disdainful Stroke is a much better place in best of three compared to best of one? Well, I, I think Disdainful Stroke's an awful main deck card, especially in a format that's as aggressive as best of one tends to be. 
So Disdainful Stroke's a great example of a card that's been designed with best of three in mind, because Disdainful Stroke is really excellent in some matchups, and it's completely terrible to the point of being unplayable in others. No, all lands are colorless. All right, so we're dead. Oh, I guess that's not strictly true. We aren't, we aren't, yeah, we're kind of dead. I can, I can baffling end their deputy, which then, which then does the hostage shake, but then like I'm losing to the Dovin alt too. Yeah, maybe, maybe I end up, Maybe I end up staying in that game if I if I choose to conclave and then deputy their their the Dovin to get the Dovin back because it was originally mine. Yeah, I think I think if I take that line, I end up being in a better spot. I don't know. Over overall, that matchup seems hard for me just because Hostage Shaker is kind of difficult for this deck to deal with. Like, obviously, if you wanted to slog that out, we could we could baffling end and then conclave. But the problem is the Krasis comes back as a zero zero, and then the Dovin's going to ultimate. So it's like they just have too many too many angles covered of life card advantage that we're just not going to be able to punch through. I mean, like, I'm still dying to the Dovin then, Monad. Like, it all it all just kind of sucks. Like, the matchup's bad and we were in a bad position. So, at a certain point like that, you have to kind of decide, like, what are you what are you doing in the matchup? Are you are you like playing to not lose by like playing scared of things that they might not even have? Or are you are you supposed to take risks to try and get ahead in a place where you're otherwise very far behind? The, my feelings so far playing this deck feel very similar to, feel very, so they're playing Goblin Chain Whirler this turn, that's why they attacked with this, so I'm not blocking here, because I don't want them to Chain Whirler and kill my hero. Um, the, uh, my, my feelings playing this deck so far in the first match that we played, and we'll see if this continues, is it feels a lot like the Esper hero decks we've played in the format, which is that it feels like why is there hero in this deck to a degree? It's like what what is hero accomplishing in this deck that we wouldn't be able to accomplish in some, with a different card? Like why is why is there this two two for two in my deck? You have a chain whirler. Multicolor card. Multicolor card. Oh, magic. Oh, magic. I don't know, Phenom. I think I think your assessment is I think your assessment is like it's kind of just mediocre regardless. Like there's a reason why none of the things you're talking about really put up results. There was like one or maybe two players that like were a blip at the Mythic Championship with it, but then like there's a reason why this archetype hasn't been performing. I think I think it's okay to say it's just bad. Yeah, experimental frenzy here is real punishing for tribunaling, but I just like don't have anything else going on. I have to like, hope there's like 12 lands in a row on top of their deck here.
Yikes. All right, what are we doing here? Baffling in sounds great. Seal away sounds great. Extra crazes might be okay. What do I... I want to trim here. Deputy detention seems pretty rancid. I just have so many things to take it off the table. Probably want one more trim here. I've got 8, 12, 16, only 20 multicolored cards. I'm going to trim a hero. If I'm bringing in all of these, I think I just can't afford to have a bunch of 2-2s two for two. Because, like, all three of our heroes... We, like, we, we had three heroes that game, and it was literally just Grizzly Bear, right? Just, like, a 2-2 two, two for two that had no other text box. Grizzly Bears did nothing wrong. Just a... Just an innocent animal trying to get by in this cold, hard world. Like in, in what context? I forgot. You asking for like my favorite color combination in like a Vorthos standpoint in the current standard format. Like favorite deck color combination of all time. Lightning Bolt wishes you luck on your quest, Snap Bolt Snap. Your username obliterates your own quest. <laughs> well, I mean, these are technically land drops, right? So, the problem, Camboni, is that Deputy isn't actually disruption. If they kill it, they just get their thing right back. Whereas Amara is at least closer to trading on tempo with their stuff. And tempo is a big consideration in matchups like this. So, Amara, for instance, when she dies to a one mana spell, they've traded one mana for two. Whereas the Deputy, when that dies to a one mana spell, they've now traded one mana for three, which is a bigger swing in their favor. Like, the deputy never trades even on mana. They're always gaining tempo when they kill it, whereas Amara at least trades even some amount of the time. This is a good start for us. Runaway, Runaway Simkin is aptly named, though, and we don't have a removal spell for it currently, so if they have, if they have some shenanigans next turn, we could be in trouble. If they attack here, I'm trading. This is a good trade for me. I, one of the things that you need to do in these matchups where you're both have like removal and creatures, kind of what we refer to as role assessment, which is kind of ask yourself like, who's favored as this game goes long? Is my opponent favored or am I favored? And I think in our current position where we're kind of at parity on board, both players have high life totals. I think our deck is definitely the more favored deck as the game goes long. So I want to make defensive trades more often or as often as possible to try and extend the duration of the game so I can get to a point where, like, my hydrate crises can take over. Someone asked what was my favorite color combination of all time. Definitely Teamer. Damn, I am a sucker for a bad blue-green, blue-green-red deck. So Vanny Show is going to trade for my knight here, I assume. The scary part about our opponent missing land drops here is it does mean they have three spells in their hand. So I could play this for three, but then I only draw one card. So I think I'm just going to play the Amara out here. 
And then next turn, I either draw a land and can then play Creases for four, which lets me draw two cards, or I draw a spell and every other spell in my deck is castable. So this kind of puts us in a position where I'm kind of happy regardless of what I draw next turn. What cards do you need in Teamer to play against the mono red decks? The Wild Growth Walker Explore Package is your best, your best set of tools for keeping up with the aggressive decks in Teamer. So we're actually going to play Teamer Climb as the last deck of today. It's going to be many hours from now because I'm doing a long stream today. But that deck I played a ton of videos on and it's very, very reasonable. It's definitely probably my favorite Teamer deck in the format. That or Teamer Domery. They're both close. Planeswalkers were already hard to evaluate, and then they went and gave them all static abilities, so... Yeah, it's gonna be... That's gonna be a learning experience for everyone. Pyromancer finishes off Domri, which feels a little bit bad. Oh. Oh, do they have a light up the stage here? I would love to get another trigger with my Dovin. Thank you. If they play Gitu and attack Runaway and Gitu into Dovin, I'm going to eat the, the Gitu. If they offer the Runaway Steam Kin trade, I'm going to take it here. I mean, the new Liliana seems powerful because it's a six mana spell. Whenever, whenever they spoil a really clunky six-mana spell, all the people who like to register 18 basic mountains, they just, like, rub their hands together like, yeah, let's do it. Like, come on, feed me the clunky mid-range players. It's funny, the... In my experience in best of three, the people who complain the most about the aggro decks being too good also tend to be the types of people who don't put cards that cost less than three mana in their deck. Yikes. We hell waiting waiting on a hydroid crisis. I'm gonna kill this and gain a life and make a thing, just because I think it's pretty likely that Dovin dies to the frenzy next turn anyways. Never forget, chat, the best source of card advantage is killing your opponent while they still have cards in hand. Best, best card advantage money can buy. When, you're, when your shock kills the, kills the opponent, they have six cards in their hand. It's kind of like a six for one if you think about it. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's exactly what we wanted for Christmas. <laughs> uh, magic. Yeah, well, like obviously, there's degrees of everything, Chalky. Like the the world, the world's not black and white. When I say most people, I actually mean most people. I don't mean all people. I honestly can't remember the last time I registered a card with CMC greater than four and constructed it. Might have been dig through time. Yeah, so they had two frenzies and twenty five cards. We've only had one crisis. Sir, kind of comeback card. Should we cast the flower to get another land out of the deck? Yeah, maybe. So like part of the reason, and this is this has felt this way in other of these bant hero decks too. Flower Flourish just, like, looks rancid almost every time. You just, like, rarely have enough creatures for it to be meaningful for the Flourish half, which means it's just, like, pay one mana, get a land, which is really not a playable magic card in most situations. Yeah, unfortunately, I think I'm kind of off this one. I think I'm, I think I'm kind of off this one. I just I don't think Bant Hero is very good. Every every iteration we've played has felt really mediocre. We've played a lot of different ones. Ever ever since the format kind of cemented into like the aggressive decks knowing what they're doing, I don't think um I don't think it's great. Where's my preview card? No, no preview cards here. This stream this stream is sponsored by you all. 